All right. We have a very special guest, uh, Director Amanda Melius. Amanda, are you there? Hey, how's it going? Fantastic. My very favorite Hollywood director. How are you? <laughs> I think I'm more of a Washington, D.C. director. No, that's now, true. I just, you we, know what I just realized? I just realized you're actually my second favorite Hollywood director. Right. And okay. but 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 number one and number two, you both have the same last name. So oh, okay. Well, that's a, <laughs> we're gonna let that go. <laughs> How's it going? Good. How are you guys? Good. Very much looking forward to you coming out to California. Um, so for those who don't know, Amanda Melius is the director of the movie that we're showing. We're showing it uh, in Orange County on Thursday, and we're showing it Friday here in San Diego, called "The Plot Against the President." And uh, tell everybody a little bit about your documentary. Well, I mean, it's, you know, uh, it's basically about Russiagate and how Devin Nunes and his staff uncovered and uh, told the truth about the fact that the entirety of Russiagate, the Mueller investigation, all of it was uh, basically uh, based on a hoax, that the whole thing was untrue, which we know, I think, you know, a lot of people that are more politically aware know now, but there's still a lot of people out there that are like, you know, walking around thinking that uh, the last administration was somehow... Uh, in bed with the Russians, which is just ridiculous. And the reason that I still kind of uh, go on about it, and I think it's really important, is because in the movie you really clearly see the blueprint for how they pull off these hoaxes and the relationship between the, the media and the intel community and all of these different factions, um, and they continue to do it. This is the kind of stuff that we see going on in all, all different ways, all different uh, news stories these days. I, it, and I think that it's. I want to. I want to point out. It doesn't matter where you stand on Trump. It doesn't matter if you love him or hate him or indifferent. Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, you, you know, this could have been any plot. You know, and it could have been any president, which is something that I, I really learned from watching your movie. Um, that this was a tactic. We're really studying a tactic and how it was adopted by half of Congress and and you know most of the media followed it. Um, and and that's what makes this movie really interesting and really amazing, right? I mean, it's it doesn't re- it's not yeah. about Trump. It's not. You I know, wouldn't even describe it as Trump a. At all. You already seen the movie? I, I, well, I yeah, I was I I, <laughs> I, I was definitely going to watch <laughs> it. I was going to watch it before I brought it to San Diego and got the director and <laughs> told everybody to come see it. We didn't but come to your house and have a screening. But here's the thing: it's hour and a half long. This movie is so dense with information. There's no way you can just watch it once. So we watched yeah. it. My wife and I watched it. I actually interviewed Amanda. There's a Magnum episode, so almost two hours long of interview talking about it um, that's going to be up on our YouTube channel. And I purposely didn't watch it before I interviewed Amanda the first time and then uh, went and watched it and was just blown away. Uh, just absolutely beautiful piece of uh, cinema, and, and it was so interesting. It was, um, you know, it's like this, uh, it's, like a, it's like a whodunit, but it's real. It's real life, you know? It actually happened, which is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it is definitely a real spy thriller, and that's what it feels like. I mean, it's one of the reasons why we wanted to do it as a film. It's because it's a very entertaining, um, exciting story. It's not one of these kind of, you know, political docs where you're sort of getting lectured at about an issue. It's um, really thrilling. So it, it works perfectly as a film. It is, and th- and that's part of the reason we, we wanted to do this, this uh, um, you know, bring Amanda out and have you talk to our, our audience because if you just sit down and watch the movie, you're going to really enjoy it, but you're going to get so much more out of the question and answer session and listening to Amanda. There, I, I have a feel. How many hours worth of uh, film was left on the cutting room floor? I, I, there, there's so much information. Um, you know, out yeah, of, a lot. There's a. I mean, there's there's like I think we have like 70 hours of footage and. Yeah, the first cut of the movie was like five hours long, and um, I keep talking about this, but we're we're trying to uh, finally hone down where we're end- we're going to end up putting the series out, which is like an extended version at some point. Um, but it's kind of got to go to the right place, uh, so we're still working on that. But yeah, there's a lot. There's yeah, it's there's there's plenty more uh, that that isn't in the movie. That's true. Yeah. So you're going to get the opportunity to meet Amanda. You're going to get to ask her questions. We're going to watch the movie. Then we're going to do a Q and A. And you're also bringing Mike Cernovich, right? He's going to come out for yeah for San Diego, and I'm pretty sure OC. And he's going to join us. And he's one of these classic. Um, he's like a very known California uh, 
political commentator. He speaks about legal issues in the movie. He is also an attorney, and he was one of the only people in the very beginning um, who who's an alternative news source that got the story right. You know, he was right about Russiagate. As much as people kind of get fired up about him these days, and, um, you know, the mainstream media obviously does not like him, um, guys like him, guys like Jack Kosobik, and obviously a lot of the other um, – alternative news sources they were right so what you know i'm no fan of russia i certainly don't like putin um i'm just curious what do you do you know like what were they doing what was russia doing during this whole thing it seems like they were kind of sitting back and and laughing and just just letting us uh uh you know be completely and totally ridiculous do you, do you, any 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 feedback or any information you have on on how the, the kremlin looked at, at that whole situation well, i think i think all of our um foreign adversaries uh, you know, they're smart enough to know that when their enemy is making um, giant mistakes themselves to, like, not interrupt them. So I think they were sitting back and having a laugh. Um, and I think that th that's really who benefited from this. And um, it's actually something John Solomon speaks about in the in the doc. Um, he, he talks about how, yeah, I mean, really the only people that benefited from this are, um, are, are uh, adversaries. Because obviously it, it just – Putin couldn't have designed a better operation than the Russia hoax. Which is, which is the great irony, you know, that, that the, uh, there were certain uh, people that were going after the president's uh, – basically they didn't like the president's political agenda. Um, which didn't is, like the president. Didn't like the president, which, yeah. is, which is fine. There are a lot of political agendas I don't like. There are, I don't, there are very few presidents I have liked. You know, but to go after uh, a, a political adversary, especially somebody as important as the leader of the free world, uh, in in this manner, and, and it was it was really watching the movie reminded me of just how ridiculous this thing was. I mean, it was really just outlandishly, horribly clownish and ridiculous. Um, so for them to go after the, the president in this manner, you know, accusing the president of of being you know of damaging the democracy because he was siding with with Russia. The great irony is how much damage was done, uh, you know, by by what they were doing by this huge lie, you know, and how how Russia benefited from it. You know, that's the that's well, kind of that's one of the great ironies in this whole thing. But when you're super angry at somebody, reality doesn't come into play. D don't you agree, Amanda? Yeah, I mean, and that's what they were, and they were they were threatened. Um, it's not even. I, I think the thing that they were more concerned with is that he was coming in with a new way of doing foreign policy and a new way of prioritizing American interests. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, being somebody that came from California, I knew nothing about politics, D.C., whatever. I moved here to to Washington, um, you know, in 20, 2017, the beginning of twenty seventeen. And um, it is really true. There's an entire industry that's built up around the way the government likes to do things, you know, and anybody that threatens that money flow is uh, this whole all these institutions are going to turn on them. Do, do you think I've said this more than once and I'm not an expert like you are, or even Mike, but do you think he poked a bear and didn't realize how big the bear was? Um, I think he had a pretty good idea of how big the bear was. Um, I think, you know, I think a lot of things um, were done. I think the administration accomplished things were really amazing in the oh, time yeah. that they had. Um, but at the same time, it's just you can't reverse 40 or 50 years of corruption in one administration, like one term. Or even two. Um, right. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, I think, the yeah, and that's that's the thing think happened is like that's that's the bear you know it's not it's not exactly something you're going to perfectly beat back and as we can see it's basically a generational war well he did pull the curtain back on the wizard of oz there's no doubt about it because now the general public knows what they did they may not yeah not everybody believes it but the majority of the people if they look at it and i think if they watch this movie which i haven't seen yet um, but I think once they see this movie, then they'll have a better idea. Cause all we're looking for is the truth, you know? And it sounds to me like what Mike is saying, you know, this is factually the truth. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, it's, that's, what's amazing about it is that there's nothing, there's nothing in it that's even debatable. I mean, I've got, you've got occasionally people will see the, 
you know, I'll get review bombed by people who haven't even seen the movie, uh, which would usually happen after the president tweeted it out um, or something like that back when he had Twitter. Um, but, you know, and you'd get these people who'd be like, oh, this is propaganda or something. And you're like, you haven't even watched it. There's not one thing in it that isn't backed up by the transcripts um, from congressional hearings. Yeah, um, there was there, there's, a, there's a whole some of the people that are in it. Rick Grinnell's in it. Who, who else? Who, who are some of the people that appear in it? Uh, Devin Nunes, um, Don Jr., um, John Solomon, uh, the Judicial Watch guys, uh, Tom Fitton. Oh, wow. And, um, yeah, I mean, really, it's it's like – and uh, several good. other congressmen. Uh, Matt Gates appears in it and Jim Jordan and uh, Mike Turner, Congressman Mike Turner. Um, and so it really is like a good swath of, of the people who – who really, you know, got this right. And I mean, remember when Nunes initially came out and took this position um, in the beginning, he wasn't even backed up by the other fellow Republicans um, in Congress. Yeah. yeah. Hold, get, hold on there. Hold hey, on there. We're going to back. Yeah, we're going to hold on to the next segment. But uh, to, for tickets, gunownersradio.com. Go to right. gunownersradio.com. You can buy tickets. There's still a lot left. So uh, uh, join us in the movie. We're going to uh, hold Amanda over. I'm going to talk about uh, uh, a whole lot more that she's doing. Because I want to know if she's got John Kennedy on. Because that guy needs to be in this movie. From Louisiana? Oh. Is he not the best? Yeah, I don't I don't know. You don't know who he is? I don't know is? if he's in there. I don't know. No, we'll have we'll to talk ask her when we come back. Blackhound Optics. Boy, they're accurate, affordable, and guaranteed. Sporting optics that go the distance. Backed by customer service that goes that extra mile. Great guys, great product, and a great company that is making optics affordable. On top of quality optics, they pay close attention to the customer experience. And did you know their scopes come with mounts? So you don't have to worry about finding one that fits. We are so excited to have them as an official partner of the show. Ask for them at your local gun store or find them online at blackhoundoptics.com. So we're talking with director Amanda Melius. She directed the movie The Plot Against the President, which is all about the, the ridiculous Russiagate scandal. So talk a little bit about you, the movie was actually ready to go at the beginning of, of October, right? Yeah, that's actually it came out um, October 9th. Uh, and we had a couple of interesting run ins. I mean, the, the main place a lot of people see it, it's available on Amazon uh, and Amazon Prime. And initially, when we gave it to them uh, to release it, all of the other platforms released it, but they held it back for like two weeks doing this, what they called an extended content review, which my distributor, who's got hundreds of titles on Amazon, had never heard of before. So I'm not, we're not, you know, we're very happy and pleased that it's on there. And uh, we're not saying it was like censored or anything, but um, it definitely was a very uh interesting process it wasn't there was not a lot of communication well i mean reading between the lines though it, it sounds like that you know it was it was, on, it was ready to go at the beginning of october just in time for the election season and it sounds like uh that they stood in the way and they purposely delayed it and 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 the the, the idea probably being um that this was this was uh this was an anti-trump move is that is that is that your thinking on that um, that they thought they were doing an anti-Trump move. Yeah, that they were uh, purposely yeah. delaying it. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would think so. I mean, especially considering the relationship that a lot of these organizations have with the um, mainstream news media, who are proven to be totally wrong and have never, have never come back from it. Like I've never seen an apology by anybody at CNN or MSNBC. Um, I've never seen a massive retraction of all of their false reporting about the Russiagate hoax um, from the New York Times or the Washington Post. I, I've stopped holding my breath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Amanda, I had a question for you. Um, my wife and I both watched that on Prime, actually. Enjoyed your movie immensely. It was great. And um, we were both shocked, actually, after we watched it, that we could get it on Prime. We were surprised it was going to be – it was still on there. Um, but a I question – well, what I was wondering about is, you know, knowing what you know now and seeing all the stuff that happened and everything you've learned in the documentary, um, how do you see this stuff going forward, um, like in 2022 and then again in 2024? Because the people that were terrified of Trump uh, to the point where they felt like they had to do these kinds of outrageous things, <clears throat> I think are still going to be feeling that way in 2024. Because, I mean... Whether it's Trump or not, what they've got to throw up there is is Biden or Harris, probably. 
So they're going to be facing the same kind of thing. How do you see that playing out later? Well, I think that's true. And I mean, I think these, the, what, what we have is a, it's going to get worse before it gets better because I think we're now in like the punishment phase of um, basically having ever elected, like for, for having, for the crime of having ever elected Trump, I think that certain parts of the country are going to be punished in all kinds of ways by the powers that be. But I think, yeah, this is going to be an ongoing issue in, um, in the further elections. I mean, election integrity is going to be a huge part of the uh, problem uh, and an issue that needs to be addressed. But also, you know, looking at your news sources, I mean, the um, having a multitude of places to get information that you trust, knowing that the mainstream media is completely untrustworthy at this point, is going to be just more valuable than ever. Were in, in the documentary, were you able to or did you try to or is it even possible to um, find somebody to uh, represent the other side? Is there, was there anybody that you could find or talk to? Who said, oh, yeah, yeah, no, this thing's legitimate. We're glad we did it. Uh, we're glad that the, you know, jur journalists covered it. Was was anybody willing to stick up for the other side, I guess is what I'm asking. Well, they weren't uh, willing to, to to do it with us. I mean, we reached out to um, representatives or the, or the people themselves, uh, pretty much everybody that we talk about um, or is really a main, main part of the film. And... Um, no, I, we didn't get a lot of people jumping up and down wanting to um, want, wanting to sit down with us. That's interesting. You didn't call Hillary? <laughs> I think Hillary was one of the only ones that was not on the list. I think we <laughs> didn't even – I think that was one of the ones that was actually just – Well, yeah. she wasn't going to tell you the truth anyway. Probably not. So Amanda's got a really interesting story too. Amanda, you went to film school at USC, which has a – a fairly good film school from my understanding right like very, yeah very yeah. good very good <laughs> like number one in the nation um and then you volunteered for the for the trump campaign and worked your way up into a position uh with the state department and eventually the white house which gave you a front row seat to all of this so with your your film degree you know starting as a volunteer working your way up you, you know you weren't you weren't you didn't step in you know after the fact this was something you were witnessing you know like i said front row seat right yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, I didn't think I was ever going to make movies again. I thought that I would just do political stuff, you know, in and around D.C. But um, I, uh, when this story kind of fell open the way that it did, and I, I was um, introduced to Lee Smith's book, uh, the manuscript, before he had published the book, uh, Plot Against the President, which is what it's based on, um, I realized it was just such a perfect um, story to be told this way. Like we said, I mean, it's a real life spy thriller and he really lays it out excellently. Um, and I encourage everybody to check that out if they've seen the movie and they want to know more, um, to check out the book. But, um, but yeah, so it, it just, I happen to have the right skill set in the right place. It was a very rare, strange opportunity. And I had a lot of people encouraging me to do it. I wasn't really sure that it was the right move. Um, it was a little sketch just uh, resigning from my government job um, right when COVID began. I think it was like, I think I resigned like the end of March and we made the movie in like less than, you know, four months or five, really less than six months. I mean, it was just a shocking, insanely fast time, uh, time crunch, but uh you know, I don't recommend doing it that way, uh, but it was it was really great. Yeah, and I think it was um, the right thing to do. Definitely. Has Has President Trump seen it? Um, the I've talked to him about it. I I got uh, somebody arranged for um, me to get a call, which or to jump on a, at some point uh, during the uh, election season last year. And he hadn't seen it at the time, but I think that that is um, very forgivable considering that uh, I think he was like you know, running for president and being president. So he's a little busy, but he, in his characteristic way, he was like, everybody loves it. Everybody's talking about it. Everyone thinks it's amazing. And I thought that was like, that was just as good for me. Um, but no, I, I know they've seen it now. I know that it's uh, been, been seen and is, is uh, a big favorite down there now. That was a fairly good Trump impression, by the way. By the way. Yeah, I don't but... think so. <laughs> well, I didn't, I haven't seen it either. So that's okay. Well, you're going to see okay. it. So you're going to see it. So again, everybody, yes. go to gunownersradio.com. You're going to want it's this Friday night if you're in San Diego. It's this Thursday night if you're in Orange, uh, excuse me, Orange County. Um, and uh, so How you, you find out about it. 
gunownersradio.com. Go to gunownersradio.com. So what's uh, what's next, Amanda? I know you, you've set up a production company, and it was pretty interesting last time we spoke. You were saying that uh, you really want to try to uh, embrace more um, projects that, uh, that, that, that tell the in, truth. In, well, that influence the, uh, the culture, the American culture. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah. I mean, the production company that we had set up to do Plot Against the President, I thought we would just do the one movie and then that's it. But it turns out there's a lot of um, interest in having a company that makes dissident content um you know i'm not even going to call it like of one political bent or another because it's you know it's not about that it's just about stories that um won't be told anywhere else and so i think that there's a real market for this especially since hollywood has basically abandoned more than half of the country i don't think that they care what america thinks of their movies anymore Mm -hmm. so if they're going to leave that audience on the table um i think there's plenty of room for production companies and other content creators like myself and other people to to step in and and do interesting great stuff i mean it's really it's weird it's like why i wanted to go to film school in the first place is to basically be able to make whatever movies i wanted to make that i thought that i was interested in and it turns out Hollywood was not the place where I was going to be able to do that. And weirdly, by leaving Hollywood and going and like getting involved in all this political stuff, it turns out that was actually the best way towards this thing that I wanted anyway. So it's a very weird, uh, weird turn of events, but it actually makes a lot of sense. You know, why, why do you think Hollywood has abandoned half, half of America? I mean, I, I hear... You know, conservative movies, uh, the first one that comes to mind would be like American Sniper. And, you know, conservative movies tend to make a lot of money. Um, why? So it can't be that. It can't be just that, you know, hey, we'll make more money if we make if we make a bunch of crap. You know, it, are they just zealots? Is it just, you know, hey, this is what we believe and we're going to push it on the entire world? Or why do you well, think yeah, Hollywood's I think, like that? I think that's. I definitely think that's part of it. I think that the ideology before business is clearly um, – I mean, anytime you look at an industry that's organizing itself by quotas, um, it, it's not it's not saying, oh, I want to make the best stories. I want to make the most interesting. I want to make, you know, I want to hire the most um, talented crew. It's no, I need to have like the most ethnically diverse, you know, mm. camera crew, which just doesn't I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's like, it's just not the, it's nothing, nothing about this is like going for um, quality first. So it's, it's clearly an ideological thing. And also it's, um, it's an internationalism thing. I, I frequently point out that the, the reason that like Hollywood tends to make these days, um, not just, you know, there's nothing wrong with summer blockbusters. I like the American summer blockbuster, but what they go for are these like, movies that can be translated as easily as possible that don't rely on like being kind of um, embedded in American culture anymore. And that's sort of the difference between when you look at these like King Kong movie that came out this year or whatever, compared to an American summer blockbuster like Jaws. Um, They just don't, they don't have the same kind of, um, you know, uh, cultural nuance um, and it's it's for a reason. It's because their their market is the global market. They don't care if the United States loves the movie. Well, well check out gunownersradio.com to buy tickets. Gunownersradio.com. Come out and see the movie. Meet Amanda. Amanda, thank you so much. Look forward to spending time thank with you, you Thursday guys. and Friday. And, and uh, thank you so much for making this movie. Thank you. This will be fun. Thanks for watching this clip from Gun Owners Radio. You can watch us live every Sunday from 4 to 6 p.m. California time right here on our YouTube channel. Or if you're in the San Diego area, you can listen to us on 1170 a.m. We're also available on your favorite podcast platform for free. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can help restore and protect the Second Amendment, not just in California, but across the country.